Hi, good morning and welcome to today's products and focus. So what we've kind of seen is a, a follow on from yesterday's uh, kind of listless trading session where the markets just don't really know where they're going to go next. But we broke through 17.561 on the US 30 there on Friday. Didn't do too much yesterday and it looks to be a similar pattern already this morning. Though both yesterday and today we drifted down towards potential support at 17.561 only to have a very modest bounce afterwards for the next potential resistance at 17.747. We still have a golden cross on the moving averages from Thursday last week. And the other technical indicators are beginning to look quite overbought with slight divergence on the slow stochastic. So that we're seeing a downtrend slowly developing right here and we're still maybe in the cusp of an uptrend on the US 30 right now. So that's something to be aware of. Today brings the earnings of Apple as well, which many traders will be looking forward to. So quite a big day if you're trading stocks or the NASDAQ or basically any American index with a big exposure to technology. So that should be quite uh, interesting to uh, prepare yourself for. Moving on to the UK 100, uh, we are just dipping our head below 64.15, which is potential support. Um, obviously, a, a kind of a interesting candle formation there on Thursday where we rejected the top highs to finish halfway up the candle, um, which usually isn't a great sign. So it's not as strong a signal as what we saw in the US 30, which is still above potential support. The UK 100 is struggling slightly. MACD histogram really running out of gas right now, which is indicative of selling pressure potentially on the horizon. We still have a negative um, cross of the 80% level and the slow stochastic there. So the UK 100 has its work cut out for it if it's going to make more progress in today's session. Looking on to Japan 225, negative day yesterday, another negative day today with an acceleration to the downside. Looking at the colored candle, it's almost twice the size of the previous one as we get close to, um, to 18,000 and change. That's something to, uh, to be aware of and to watch out for. Um, looks like we're not going to get our bullish cross on the moving averages at some point soon. Uh, slow stochastic overbought, uh, RSI almost is kind of getting there, and um, you know we'll see how we get on. But nevertheless, 18,648 is the next potential support level on the Japanese market. And there is some central banker meetings this week. We've got the FOMC on Wednesday, and I believe you do have Japan session at the end of the week. Neither are expected to do much in the way of uh, any sort of action to uh, do anything for their economies this month. Um, I think the FOMC has all but uh, got a 0% chance of, uh, of raising rates this session uh, with only a fraction uh, of an improvement towards the end of December. So it's all about the statement, what comes with it, rather than the actual action itself. So looking at dollar yen, the dollar again is losing a little bit of momentum against the Japanese yen as people are buying the yen as a hedge against uncertainty in the equity markets. We are now currently trading quite close to that 55 period SMA in the middle of two ranges right now with one spot 90, oh sorry, 119 spot 76 as potential support with 121 spot 87 acting as potential resistance. You can see there on the RSI, we almost hit the 70% um, level only for it to act as a kind of a quasi resistance. Um, so there still could be a little bit of further momentum on dollar yen should things improve. But certainly the equity markets look like they're taking a bit of a breather after last week's strong rallying sessions. So it's not that there's a huge amount of negativity in the markets because you have a huge amount of quantitative easing potentially on the horizon. So uh, any sell-off is kind of supported by the idea of cheap money just around the corner. So looking at West Texas crude, it's just getting destroyed the last couple of sessions. Really negative candle yesterday, another negative candle today. $42 is a potential support level. The MACD's crossing the zero line. The other technicals are not yet overbought. This still has some gas in the tank, should that negative sentiment continue. Looking at gold, uh, still not getting a lot of love actually, considering we're in a low interest rate environment for longer, commodities are just not doing that great. Uh, and I would have thought that gold, if yen has been bought as a hedge against uncertainty, then gold is supposed to be a safe haven too. But the technical signals and the candles are again indicative of selling pressure above 1168, with 1157 still being the potential support 
and we have that 21 period SMA racing up just behind it. Finishing up with GBP, USD and Euro dollar, uh, Euro dollar is not getting much love either. Another negative day, well, that negative day on Monday, we're having a bit of a retracement back up to 111, uh, one spot 11. Uh, which isn't really happening with that much conviction. MACD's crossing the zero line. Other technicals show room for further downside. We, the question for traders, is this going to be a retracement or are we going to be able to break back through one spot 11? And that's up to the traders at home to make that decision. So finishing up with GBP USD or cable, uh, modest bounce off the 21 period SMA yesterday. Not much follow through today. One spot 54.24 is the potential resistance. Um, will that again be a retracement? That's up for you guys. But negative cross on the MACD. Uh, we had a sell signal on the slow stochastic RSI, pretty neutral. So any upwards momentum we get to one spot 54.24. That's a very strategic point to be involved in cable. So market calendar wise, what do we have coming up? Well, we've got um, GDP in the UK at 9.30 UK time. Durable goods right there over in the US. Um, because of the time difference, that's actually gonna be um, 12.30 in the UK. And then if we go on to Wednesday, you've got German consumer confidence and you have the crude oil inventory change don't forget, you do have that FOMC policy decision at 7 o'clock UK time. Uh, sorry, 6 o'clock UK time. And um, if we have a look at some of the details right here, you can see on Thursday you've got house price data, uh, employment data from the US, US GDP, um, CPI from Germany, the housing index. Thursday's got a lot of data. And if you go on to Friday, uh, I think Friday gives you a whole host of uh, Japanese data. And you've got the uh, retail sales figures from Germany, employment and a C a CPI from the Eurozone. Um, so actually we've got a fair amount of economic data to finish up the week as well. So guys, keep your eye on the chart for make insights part of your layout going forward and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.